Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. Have you ever wondered how to take your army painting up to the next level? In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to do exactly that. So if you haven't watched it already, I did an army painting video on the Kroot army box that came out recently. That video focused on tips for how to get your army ready for the tabletop quickly and efficiently. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take that same army scheme and upgrade it to make your character models and centerpiece models really stand out. So the first thing is actually before we even start painting the model, we have to make sure that it's properly prepared. After all, you're never going to do your best work if the canvas is already flawed before you start. So that means taking a bit more care with removing the sprue gates using good snips and a sharp knife, cut the sprues away from the side of the piece, leaving it a bit of the sprue attached and then trim that sprue down afterwards. This reduces the stress on the model and reduces the chance of taking a big chunk out of it. Then you need to carefully remove all the mold lines with the back of a knife or a mold line remover, or even sanding them down to make sure they're not there at all. Mold lines are a surefire way to ruin a good model and always stand out like a sore thumb if they're left on the model accidentally. When you're putting the model together, use glue or sprue goo to fix it. And if there are still gaps after that, use a putty like milliput or green stuff to fill them in. It goes without saying that your best models won't look their best if there's a great big hole in them. You might consider painting your models in sub-assemblies depending on the model. I strongly recommend, if you do, to make sure that all the pieces are as clean as possible and to dry fit them together to make sure they go together with minimal gaps before you even start painting. Secondly, and sort of following on from the first point, use the right tools. Like I said with the cleanup, Using good snips, a sharp knife, sanding pads, sprue goo and putty, these are all the best tools for making sure your models get off the sprue and into one piece in the best possible shape. You're also going to need some decent brushes. I know there are a lot of brands out there, but I love the o Artist Opus Series S. These brushes are really nice. My S0 has been going for about 18 months now and still has a great point after countless projects. It's also the same with paints. My personal favorites are AK Interactive and Games Workshop, but I try not to get too caught up on what brand I'm using, but rather go for the paints with the qualities and colors that I need. For example, Games Workshop contrast paints are great for army painting, as you saw in the Crew Army video. They have amazing coverage and can really quickly fill in areas like leather. For standard painting, as well as enamels, I think AK Interactive are the best. Their third gen acrylics are so smooth and nice, and they have a huge range of colors, and their enamels are just as ace. So, so good for grime and rust and dust. I'm a really big fan. However, for airbrushing a smooth off-white color, the Tamiya XF76 is a great choice as it's just super smooth through the airbrush. So try to find paints that suit what you're trying to achieve rather than going for a specific brand. Having the right tool for the job not only makes the most of your minis, but it also makes the job a lot easier and more enjoyable. Have you got any tools that you really like using? Let me know in the comments. Third, and this is the first painting specific tip, push the contrast. On the army scheme for the Crute, a lot of the leathers were done using a coat of Saigor Brown over the skin tones that we put down. Saigor Brown is a contrast paint from Games Workshop, and this range of paints naturally pulls in the recesses and pulls away from the raised areas. So it can create some nice highlights and shadows just in a single coat, which is great for army schemes. However, if we want our carrots models to really stand out, we need to push the contrast between the shadows and highlights even more. One way I like to do this is to put some of the contrast paint onto my wet palette and mix varying degrees of AK Ivory into it. This will create a nice gradient of colours which you can use to highlight the leather and I like to focus on a single column of light down the middle of the mini which helps to draw the eye in. So here I'm stippling along the edge of the leather to push the contrast between the shadows and the highlights. And I'm going to work up through the mixes with gradually more ivory to really push those highlights as they go towards the middle of that column of light. High contrast and concentrating on a simple column of light on the model helps to bring the eye into the details of the models and really makes them stand out. You can also use a black paint to black line the areas where two different materials on the model meet. This is a great way to really make the details stand out and it's quite satisfying too. So speaking of details, my next tip is you actually have to paint them all, which sounds stupid, but when you're army painting, you can get away with skipping some of the details just by coloring them in with a color that the eye would expect to see. For example, using a bone or an ivory color in a flat coat on a bone detail 
Maybe with a wash will do the trick and it's really fast. But for character painting, we need to take it a step further. So you could then go on to add a few more levels of highlights to that bone. Or you could do like I'm doing here and start from a dark color and painting my way up through the highlights and then black lining it. It helps to give you more control over the look and highlight placements on your model, which ultimately leads to better end results. Lastly, and probably the biggest tip, is to take your time. Army painting is a process of getting your models looking nice at the tabletop as fast as possible in a really efficient way. Character painting is almost the opposite. We want to spend as much time as we need to get our best results on a single model. You can still be efficient and use things like effects paints to get great results faster, but just don't rush things. Be deliberate with your brush strokes. I think the results speak for themselves here. What do you think? Have you got any tips for painting character models? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching everyone. See you next time. Bye.